presentation it was for the fundamentals of microbiology uh, biology 2325-100 or if you're in the summer it's dash 80. Um, this is just a short little presentation giving you some some tips on your semester project the oral presentation that you all are going to be submitting um, so uh, this is just an overview you have from now until the end of the semester um, where you need to design, present, and record an oral report that you will submit to Moodle. It's worth 20% um, of your grade. You get to choose your own topic, but it has to be something that falls within the learning objectives of the course. And if you're not sure what the learning objectives are, um, they are listed on all of the um, video presentations, the slides for each lesson they're listed. They're also listed on Moodle for each lesson uh, under the lesson modules. If you're unsure if your topic is appropriate, please just uh, shoot me an email and I will be happy to help you. Um, remember that oral presentations, um, they can be entertaining, they can be creative, but they are fundamentally for sharing knowledge. And in this specific case, uh, you may be talking about scientific research or background knowledge. And it's very similar to uh, a written report, but you are informing via delivery method. So since it's an oral report, you have more control over how the audience receives the information. And um, you can actually choose different formats if you'd like, if you want to do something similar to what I'm doing right now with PowerPoint slides and voiceover, that's appropriate. Uh, you also can do a face-to-face -face where um, you're doing something in front of the camera. You also can do things where you're using animation or maybe you're using props or maybe you make a play out of how mitosis works. That's completely fine. But you got to make sure that it's appropriate for the course, that you're meeting all of the uh, rubric guidelines. Um, you have to be able to cite sor sources and reference and things like that. Um, ideally, when you're finished recording and editing and maybe re-recording, right, um, you want to submit it to Moodle. But sometimes the file is too large for Moodle, um, in which case you could email it to me. But uh, emails, sometimes emails get lost, especially towards the end of the semester. So it may be better for you to upload it to YouTube and you can share the URL with me or you can do the thing where you invite me on YouTube. But that requires that you have a YouTube account. Um, I'm working on uh, this Google Classroom. I'm gonna see how much the, like if the files that you can put on there, I don't know what the file limit is yet. I'm going to try to work that out. If it's larger than it is for Moodle, and uh, I, I, maybe I can get IT to help us. Anyway, I'll let you all know. But for right now, the plan is to get it onto Moodle. You want it to be um, a W, no, an MP4 video file, not a PowerPoint, PowerPoint X, MP4. Usually, MP4 video files can be submitted to Moodle. They're not too large, but those PowerPoint X files are too large. I don't know why. Um, your video is your property, but if you want to, you can sign a release. I have release forms in the module for the uh, semester project where if you want to release it for educational purposes, then you can do that. Um, any camera can be used for your face-to-face -face recording. If you want to do screen-to-video, I highly recommend Screencast-O-Matic. That's what I use. Also, you can use Camtasia. It's free. Both of them are free online um, programs that you can use. This is what the Screencast-O-Matic page looks like. All you do is you go straight to the page and you click on launch recorder and a little box pops up and you say okay and then it launches the recorder you hit record and there you go it's just that fast and easy um this is camtasia camtasia requires you to get a free trial before you use it but then you can just cancel it immediately after like really there's no um 
no obligation whatsoever and it's really quick and easy to use as well um, PowerPoint tools this I do not recommend and the, the the problem with this is for some reason people have had a lot of problems with converting their PowerPoint uh, where you can record your voice over PowerPoint in PowerPoint and then they're having trouble converting it over to mp4 I'm not really sure I've seen this be a problem in the recent past so I honestly my my recommendation is to go with Screencast-O-Matic that's the best one um, this here is the grading rubric you can find this in Moodle I'm, I'm going to go over the major points here uh, preparation and planning so it needs to be really clear to me that you have spent some time thinking about your topic that you've planned it you've practiced the oral presentation um, you should have data that's an information that's that's well prepared and formative you should have visual aids um, it's not not too distracting uh, you should be speaking clearly you should be delivering your words with ease you should be pronouncing things correctly and you should not just be reading from your slides the inevitability of having to read from your slides is there but um, you should have enough ad lib you should know what you're saying enough to where you feel comfortable with what you're talking about in other words i need to know that you practiced right um, the timing is a bit flexible it depends on what your subject is some subjects have just less that you can talk about um, so it's a bit flexible but you want it to be somewhere in that 10 to 15 minute window and remember the three p's planning preparation and practice and I would even say maybe five P's, planning, preparation, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> um, your introduction, this is, uh, this is where you're kind of breaking in the topic. You need to outline what your topic is. Make sure you put in your introduction the learning objectives that your topic is covering. Um, some people will just be covering one learning objective. Some people's topic may cover several different learning objectives. Um, you should have some kind of a framework where you, where you go in and you say, first we're going to talk about that, and then this, and how it relates to that. That's the kind of thing you do in the introduction. You have a general purpose and you have a specific purpose. Um, obviously, your general purpose is to give an overview or summarize or outline or you're explaining something, right? Those are general purposes. A specific purpose is the thing that you want the audience to walk away from your presentation remembering, okay? So think about that and make sure all of that is in your introduction. The body is uh, it's graded based on... Um, if your specific purpose in the introduction is supported, right, by what you include in the body, uh, your content has got to be limited, right? Because 10 minutes might feel like a lot, just a long time when you're talking, but it's really not that long. Uh, you want to clearly develop all of your ideas. You want to have really good illustrations, examples. Do not forget your citations. You have to cite sources, you have to cite photos. Make sure you give photo credits, give credit where it is due. Um, and you should have some outside research besides just what we've done in class. Um, and your content has got to be accurate, okay? Um, conclusion should provide a summation. So conclusion is kind of where you go back to the introduction. In the introduction, you tell everybody, you know, this is what we're gonna talk about. In the conclusion, you go back and tell everybody this is what we talked about right so you give it you go over the the main purpose the main ideas everything that you've covered um it is really a good idea to talk about how what research that you did on your topic helps to enhance the learning of the people that watched it the audience so uh, maybe you give an illustration on mitosis where you go into much more detail and you want the audience to walk away with some kind of uh, visual image that helps them to remember it or something like that you know so what what does your presentation add to the learning objectives
Uh, and then of course structure organization so the presentations have to be cohesive and they have to be presented in a clear order uh, you want to use your time wisely you don't want any one part to be too long or too short you must have connections between your ideas that help the audience to kind of follow along uh, you can use a logical order you can use chronological order you can go for more general ideas to more specific ideas or from something that's totally unknown to uh, known or vice versa uh, from cause to effect or problem to solution so some kind of connection some kind of order um, and whatever sequence or whatever order you use you want to link those um, ideas together and transition from one slide to the next um, your presenter I'm sorry, the presenter, your style and your voice and design, okay? So you must show command of the language. Use precise words. Um, you want to use vocabulary wisely. You should not be using a lot of um, uh, a lot of like awkward pauses, things like that. I've got to be able to hear you and understand what you're saying, of course. Um, and then obviously things like grammar and spelling, uh, you don't want to use a lot of abbreviations. Uh, you want to avoid slang. Um, obviously, anytime you have species names, you want to make sure that those are formatted correctly. Uh, you want to have a, a report that's visually appealing and it's clean and simple. It's easy to read. And you want to have some graphics or some visuals or some um, photos, but you want them to enhance the understanding of ideas and not to distract away from them. And finally, references, you, it, it depends on what you're talking about. Um, I don't want you to have any less than maybe two or three references, and you should absolutely have in-text citations or citations that are like on the bottom of the slides where you're citing that information. And then at the end, after your conclusion, absolutely should have a formal reference list where you're listing the full citations for everything that you uh, researched for your talk. And uh, you've got to use sources that are reputable. You can't just Google stuff. You can't use Wikipedia. You got to use things like textbooks peer-reviewed journal articles, academic websites, uh, government websites, things like that. Um, you've got to have an author, you've got to have a publication year for every reference, okay? And you, you're using APA format guidelines for your reference lists. And I've got lots of examples for how to do that in the, the Moodle module. Um, APA formatting guidelines, avoiding unintentional plagiarism. I've also got in there the link to the information for the Writing Center. And don't forget, all of this is outlined in great detail in the guidelines for completing oral presentations. So go ahead and make sure you spend the time to read through those.